Bachelor Bracken. Yeah, I mean, so that's, that's kind of one of the specials why like, people like to come on Wednesday, they chill Thursday, Friday's the pre-tournament, right? And then they get the yeah. whole thing. Uh, yeah, I, I, know, I know usually for like a lot of the top players that come here to SoCal, the call for them is like they go to Koreans. They go, oh, they go, they go to Void's, uh, Void's place and they just play and hang out over there. But I, and I keep telling them, man, like, you gotta, you gotta visit LA. You gotta, if you come here, man, you gotta visit LA, LA. Check out some good space. But I know a lot of these people love to have fun. But hey, man, Inland Empire, they'll always represent even themselves here. It's Moonbird versus Nitro. Oh, Nitro, my God. Bro, it's gonna be a hard day. Yeah. Bro, why did they have such similar names? They even, me off. they even switched their Twitters, too, like, a while back. SMH. But either way, yeah, we're gonna be seeing Ness versus Joker. This isn't a matchup I haven't really seen. I'm sure this is a classic in the IE, but. but what's. I mean, I can't remember the local that they have in the IE. I know they have one. I think it's like mid tier Mondays. Yeah, there's, there's mid tier Mondays. I think there's like two frame Tuesdays. Nothing on Wednesday, and then there's like YGF yeah, five, five can, you, can you imagine me in Lumbre and I truly like, yo, man, I really just drove 30 minutes away from my house so I can go to a local and play mid tier Mondays. <laughs> Hey, bro, the grind is real. Yeah, it really is, and these results do matter here, especially for a player like Lumbre, one of the best nests in SoCal. Mm -hmm. oh, still surviving, holds a good DI, yeah, not Lum gonna die. Yeah, Lumbre was definitely on the come up these last couple of seasons, but unfortunately he just was never quite able to make it on. I'd really like to, to see him like step it up, because he, do, he, do, he does have those wins, and he's always like so close to getting them. Yeah, and one of the things that I spoke to with about Lumbre, he's very technical with his nest play. Definitely super technical, gets the forward air, but just not able to get the stage spike. Mm -hmm. Good oh, opportunity yeah, down. down smash. Yeah, Nutra got out, thought he would save because of the Ness back air, but don't you know, none of Ness's aerials have a uh, have lag. Yep. Go neutral air, gets the forward in here, puts him off the stage already. PK fire, but unfortunately the arson activation will stall Joker before he gets hit. Good stuff from Moonbrae. This is what he's doing. He's whiff punishing the whiff punisher. <laughs> knowing, yeah. that, knowing that Nitro's going to be coming in with an aerial and making sure he's spaced enough himself, that he can punish him for going for it. Yeah, you, do. you don't really want to fight Joker head on when he has that Arsene. It's just so dangerous. And the risk reward just really isn't in your favor, and especially when you have a three stock lead. And the risk reward isn't in your favor for going for neutral get up. Honestly, the way that Moonbrae has been catching Nitro for that recovery, that's kind of nice little signal like, hey man, I need to really start mixing it up because honestly, going for neutral get up is not going to be the, the call here. We did see uh, Loombray show really quick one of those t uh, texts that I talk about how technical he is. He likes to go for this opportunity where he goes off the platform, uh, off the stage within a certain frame, and the PK fire goes straight instead of the actual. Mm -hmm. uh, he was mentioning to me about how, how uh, super important that tech is. Yeah, hopefully I'll be able to see it and recognize it because from the way it sounds, it kind of sounds cool. Yeah, it's basically like he's off the platform so, can, so where the trajectory would be for a PK fire to be diagonally down at a 45 degree angle, it's straight instead like Lucas's. Mm -hmm. Nice PK Thunder and he brings it back. Like, what a quick like, e? Oh, yeah. Oh, I think he I think he pressed a button in like the blast zones. Oh, really oh. good whip punish on the down air. I thought he was going to be going for back air, especially the way he was between him and Nitro. Mm -hmm. fire, nice. It's a dodge. Still surviving. Dash tag missed opportunity here. Yeah, there's still a huge deficit, but you know, we've seen Joker in deficits like this before, and we, we all know how that's turned out sometimes. All right, respect Arsene, respect the back air. Respect Joker, bro. I feel like Joker, like, in general, you can usually do fine against them. It's just once Arsene comes in, the damage comes in. And oh, great. this is something that you great said magnet. earlier, right? Where, like, if you have something like that can have your opponent get scared. Remember how you said Peach's down smash? Yeah. This is Ness's, dude. That Ness Magnet was so good. It was so, it was so well positioned, too, because it's that constant hitbox. You can put it down right where Joker wants it, especially since he got out of the first up B, the one that really gives you that third jump. So he's just going up. So no matter what, he'd have to hold it in. When you're in that situation, like like we said, you're scared, you want to go up as fast as possible, and got caught. Yep. Reminiscent of like a Fox Shine. Honestly, that's mm. quite a, kind of like what Ness is, like Saiyan Magnet, how I think about it. It isn't Fox Shine, but it's Fox Shine in a sense where like, you can do some tricks off of it, you can do some things off stage with it. Mm. And not only that, instead of being a reflector, it's more of an absorber. Yeah. It will not live up to the to the legend of Fox Shine, but it, it's still pretty good. Yeah. I don't know why they decided to make it a constant it's, hitbox in this game. It's it's as utilizable as Fox Shine was in Melee, for sure. Yeah. Anyway, so game two going to be switching over to the, uh, the tried and true, what got him the top ten on the PR. Yeah, uh, Richter. 
character that uh, SoCal really just doesn't really know how to fight. We only have two of them. Honestly, we have T3 Dome and we have um, Simon Belmont. I'm, I'm sorry, Nitro. Mm -hmm. So far, 115 percent. What, what a change of pace of the game, honestly. I was just gonna say, bro, he's already dead. Yep, and because Lumer kind of had like the, the Joker matchup really well played, but right here, the Richter matchup is kind of being the bane of Lumer right now. So able to survive using that great aerial drift from the directional air dodge, but unfortunately, he had a lot to fight for coming back on the stage. Mm -hmm. Watching uh, watching Nitro play Belmont, you just you really wonder, like, how am I how do I get in against them? He plays so fast. And he's just so comfortable with the character. He does not have a jump, but he's going to get the good mangle. Yeah, we do. We got those. One more time for the Holy Water. Nice. Get forward to him instead. Can he angle that another one? Great opportunity because he did have Cross in play, covering that option against Ness. Mm -hmm. And now only 60% uh, on Nitro. He's actually lapped Lumber in percent. Oh, Ooh, no tech. So. No tech. And unfortunately, even if you do the 45 degree angle forward air, you won't get, be able to come back on the stage. Is the 45 degree forward air the best one for uh, Tether? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it has. It's one of the longest tethers in the game. Alongside Joker's Up B. So Joker Up B is some different type of type of reach. But anyway. That's, that's the tall. That's the that's the DLC Up B, man. That's why it's so long. Right. <laughs> oh, what no. a read for the roll in. What a play for the lumber in here. Yet. This is this is quite a turnaround for Lumber because he's now even stock. He was down so much. He, he was. almost had that uh that bear off the stage that would have cemented uh the stock. Back throw though. No, he's still living. Yeah. You gotta watch out for Axe. Axe will definitely kill you that far off the stage. Yeah, nice. The only uh the only kill throw uh Belmont really have are the forward throw, and that's actually a pretty strong forward throw. Nice, he nears the axe, comes back with the landing here. I like that he's slowly approaching with shield, because he knows you have to watch out for that forward tilt. And it's, I believe it's frame 11 and frame 12 on the return. Back throw, gets the kill. You say wow, frame 12 on the return? God. Yeah, it's literally just like, um, because in Rondo of Blood, it's actually the same frame, and especially for um, for all the Belmonts. Like, the, the whip is quick, it's a little bit slow to start, but it's fast on the return, even sure. in their own games. So they kind of actually brought that same frame data over to the character. Oh, a little, really little fun fact. Yeah, that's really neat. But yeah, you, you watch uh, Belmont just like flipping uh, the F tool at you. You try to punish him, but already they're throwing something else out. Mm -hmm. And honestly, in my opinion, like a lot of people may or may not agree. Like, I honestly think Belmont's uh, one, of the, one of the best high tiers in the game for sure. Definitely like a couple things short from being a top tier. Honestly, I'm glad he's not a top tier. I don't want I don't know what he would need to be a top tier, but I don't want it. Um slightly higher recovery and maybe his 45 degree angle tether is longer. That that would be about it. Yeah. But kinda one of the things that Belmont does suffer in his own game is when you're up close to him, he does take a lot of damage. And that's one thing that we do see from Lumbre is trying to make sure he's close to him as possible. Mm -hmm. I think my favorite thing from Nitro was a while ago when he posted his matchup chart, he's like, Yeah, you may have a bad match, but don't forget, you can just like Kill Belmont at 10% sometimes if you're good enough. Exactly. I think it's one of those things about skill, like how how all oh, like I like he instead opts to just take the damage from the holy water rather than to give him the read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no need it. to no need to like do an option really fast. You could figure it out as long as you're not getting hit by that F smash. Yeah, and it's good for Loomer to even keep the patience of mind because he knows he was taking a lot of damage throughout the ledge, you and he was able smash? to get the reversal, no, but he's not out just yet. I'm so surprised that rage up smash didn't kill. That one's gonna be. That will be it. Yeah, Lumbre will. Lumbre's up 2-0. What a turnaround! What a turnaround! Honestly, it started off more and like, yo man, Nitro just knows Lumbre's number was Belmont, and then Lumbre just quickly turned things around. Yeah, Honest Nitro. Nitro was throwing Lumbre around for a good while. Yeah, man, he looked like a body bag for a second. But I mean, the one thing I did like from Lumbre, his persistence at the ledge. He said, "I'd rather take the damage from Holy Water rather than to give Nitro the read, and I take, I lose the stock." Mm -hmm. At that point, the damage that you take. It's better than losing than the stock itself, right? So I like how Loombray did factor that. Like, let me hold onto the ledge. All I'm gonna do is take like 10% from Holy Water, but I still get to come back rather than to just lose my stock for going forward at the ledge because I'm so scared. Mm -hmm. Game three going in, going back to PS2. Nacho has a tall order to uh, to take this back and move on to Winners Finals. Especially after that second game, like we said, had his number, but Loomer just turned it around. That might be a little demoralizing, but I don't think Nacho's that type of player to just like get demoralized that easily. He's just gonna go and play like it's one-one or uh, you know two-zero. -oh. Yep. Back throw doesn't go anywhere far, but I like the fact that he's <laughs> kind of reading the Nacho's panic option. Probably trying to go for an area calls calls it a little bit too early. We're punishing him with the PK fire, double PK fire coming in. Once again, Lumbre looking to get the whip punish himself. He knows that spacing and he gives a little bit of respect here to Nitro. 
Kind of reminiscent of the beginning of the first game, right? Nitro has such a big lead, but Lumbre still fights. Tried and true, keeping him at the corner, but unfortunately he gave that up. I do like that Lumbre is making sure, like, if he does go in on Nitro, it's after he tosses something in, and then he makes the opportunity to go for a play like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, Lumbre is playing really patient. I'm, I, I love the way he's doing it, too. Because he's not too, like, quick trying to just go run in and just get that hit on Belmont. He's like, all right, I need to stand this distance. I'm going to react to what he's doing, and then I'll do something. Yeah. Oh, a little too close. But he stayed literally just out of range of four to the corner. And he still makes the time to go for PK Thunder because he knows if I can do if I can go for it, that'll make um, Nitro hold shield or stop him from going for an edge card. I like how he tried to get the absorption here, but unfortunately that kinda of did not pay off well. Mm -hmm. Good play though, honestly, adapting a little bit to how holy water works through ledge. I'm trying to let Nitro know if you're gonna be going for this uh, play at the ledge here, I am gonna go try to go for some free health. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, you're gonna have to like mix it up. Yeah. Goes for PK Thunder oh, not getting no the tech, tech, but we kept our jump. Down smash? Oh, no, but he still gets on the return here. It's on the other side. Yeah, not going to kill, but still getting some damage in. Oh, he plowed him, hit that fair. Uh, actually caught him right before he was able to pop out. Yeah. Down throw, run up forward air. Nitro is so good at keeping his opponents on the ledge. But Lumbre is doing such a great job of, like, mixing it up, saying you can't just get this damage for free. Nice, he's the cross up, no grab. Lumbre trying to stick up close here, but I like that play from Nitro. Goes to the up out of the shield, does not want to be caught in that corner for too long. Really good idea. It's him at such a weird angle, because like all the hits didn't connect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I mean, you, moving your hurt box in this game honestly plays off really well. And the fact that Lumbre know, like, hey, if I try to duck down, I might try to avoid the forward tilt. And yeah. there are some characters that actually can't avoid uh, the Belmont's forward tilt for sure. Yeah, Nessa's, Nessa's crouch is something else, because, like, he definitely, he's already a small character, and then he just puts his hurt box like in half. <laughs> Pretty much. Nice, the back off the back air. air. Yeah, tries to, tries to oh. catch him with the side magnet again. Should he wait for the landing? I like it though, he's still going for the pressure against Nitro. Trying to stick close to him, but he immediately side, side stalls. He gave flash, yep. You, you really want to just wait there until it's about to go off, and then you do your option. Good play from Moonbra, specifically because he went for PK flash, and he knew that Nitro was going to wait for it to end, and then he called out his jump from the ledge to go for that option in that play. That was really well played, honestly, even with PK Flash. Mm -hmm. It made sure that, that an unusable move was more usable in the terms of pressuring the opponent. Yeah, the PK Flash was like a, a test to see, all right, what are you going to do? How are you going to react to this? Exactly. What's your, what's your defensive option? And Moonbray again, up another stock. He actually, he, he might 3-0 uh, Nitro right now, the way he's playing. Nitro still looking for a legal space, a uh, couple aerials. The one thing that I do like that Nitro is, has covered is those angles. He mm -hmm. always has those kind of angles covered, and he always know what kind of play to make on Lumbre, especially at the ledge. I do want to see him go for a couple more mix-up against the Holy Water, because Lumbre is catching up. Oh, wow, just kind of go from the up B really early, but still uh, catching him. Is that fair? He tries to catch him with the magnet again. Lumbre is playing on fire right now. He knows he's so close to victory. Oh, I like it. Doesn't even go for the tether because he knew his Lumbre had out the PK Thunder. Even holds the up smash, but not gonna kill PS2 still. Pretty big, uh, pretty big ceilings. No call out from the aerial. A small adaptation from Nitro. Yeah, he Nitro actually, yeah, he neutral got up and then rolled back just in case. Lumbre knows I have a lot to lose here. Yeah, Nitro is still. He's still in this. He's bringing it back. He knows that uh, Lumbre can taste victory in his hand, so he's going back to this defensive style, and Lumbre kind of adapting. He took a little bit of damage, but I think he realized what's happening right now, so he's going back to his uh, his play style of, like you said, whip punishing and just going uh, going in when he knows he needs to. The tech, and the forward air. There. And I think that's one thing Lumbre was looking for, right? If he goes for the angled forward air, if he tries to go for the tether, I have that covered. If he goes for the tech, like we saw the last game, of the I'm sorry, the last edge guard, between him and Nitro, he had that covered. So Lumbre with a lot of good callouts against Nitro. Mm -hmm. Honestly, Nitro played the played the matchup pretty slowly. He almost brought it back, and I'm not gonna lie, it kind of goes to show his level of play style 